Plaza is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As an active member of the National Guard, I see firsthand the importance of the National Guard supporting our armed forces as we protect our country. As Guard members return from overseas, many of them stand ready and willing for their next mission. As many of my colleagues have pointed out today, the National Guard can play a pivotal role in securing America's borders. We have seen successful Guard missions in the past with Operations Jumpstart, Phoenix, and Nimbus. Last year, I called on the Department to use the National Guard to help secure the border. In May 2013, I offered an amendment in, the, in this committee to the Border Security Results Act, which would ensure that DHS considers lessons learned from past National Guard missions on the border. Both the current and previous administrations have used the National Guard on more of a short-term ad hoc basis rather than on any long-term strategic plan. Uh, Secretary Johnson, wouldn't it be beneficial for the Department to partner with the National Guard and develop a long-term strategy for the Guard to assist along the borders? And wouldn't it be the borders are, would be more secure if we had a well-planned budgeted strategy that consistently uses the Guard members rather than just using them sporadically? Um, Congressman, first of all, I want to consider every option to deal with this circumstance. I take no lawful option off the table. Um, as I am sure you know, the Guard has limitations, uh, um, in, including posse comitatus. Uh, Guard can't be involved directly in law enforcement. There are some exceptions to that. And the Department of Defense obviously has a lot to say about this, too. It is their resource. It, it, it comes out of their, their budget. And there are a lot of demands on the Guard, particularly in this season, you know, we are dealing with hurricane season. There may be different crises they respond to. But I have heard the, the calls from some that we put the guard on the border. I would want to understand better what the, what the options are for the use of the guard, um, depending on the direction of this situation takes. But I don't, I don't take any option off the table. Uh, but there are definitely some limitations on the use of the Guard uh, in this respect, I think, and we have to be mindful of those. Mr. Vitello, I mean, you have been with the Border Protection for a while. Were you a part of any of these Guard missions in the past? Can, can you comment on whether there are pros and cons? So, yes, we have had a, a great relationship over the years with the National Guard and the Operation Jumpstart and the, and the ongoing Operation uh, Phalanx now, which in where we use uh, National Guard resources to do things like surveillance and sensor uh, response or sensor um, monitoring for us. Um, it is not without its challenges. We, we, were, we were blessed to have the Guard when we were building the, the new 6,000 agents, and it gave us a bridge to more capability on the ground. Uh, we learned from them and in the resources that we are reusing from DOD as they come back from theater and are pressed into service for border security. So we have learned a lot from them in all manner with, with regard to plans, strategic deployments, et cetera. Um, but having the Guard on the border has some limitations. It's, it, this work is best done um, by law enforcement agents, in my opinion, we, we, learning from the Guard. There are some things that they can do. I think the Secretary is right to keep our options open. But as it relates to this particular problem, where it is most acute in the Rio Grande Valley, um, it is not a challenge to arrest people who come as children or ch families with children. Um, the other zones along the southwest border and in South Texas are well patrolled and are either better equipped than they were last year or are just as well equipped as they were last year. All right. Well, I, I think originally, when I, last year, it was suggesting the amendment was to ask DHS to study the lessons learned. It was to, to look in it. Don't take any option off the table. But with the guards been basically um, sustaining combat missions, humanitarian assistance missions, uh, disaster relief for the past 12 years. They, they, they've proven that they can multitask and do numerous things. And, and I still believe it's much more cost effective and efficient to surge the guard to the border, get the operational control, and work them into your plan. They're going to train somewhere every year. And you could rotate them in, you could rotate them out, fix the issues, figure out what they could do. And to um, Congressman Clark's issue, yeah, we don't want kids walking across the border and being met with guns, but I don't think they'd be met with guns. There's probably other agencies, nonprofit or federal groups that could be out there, but the, you know, our borders are dangerous. People are, there's, we don't, because we don't have control over our borders, we don't know what's coming across. But we do know there's drug cartels, there's gun running, there's drugs. 
And, you know, that would be another mission. It could be an escort <clears throat> mission. It could be a roving patrol. It could be a communications. It could be providing the necessary assistance because I don't think it would be wise to expand the full-time employees or of the Border Protection Agency. I don't think the American people want to see more federal law enforcement agencies when they have this tool, this cost-effective tool at its fingertips. So I would just want to urge um, Mr. Secretary to r really t consider this. I know every member of the National Guard that I serve with would love the opportunity to secure our borders. The American people want to know that our borders are secure and that we're safe and sound. So thank you for being here today. Uh, chair now recognizes Mr. Bar